But again, the defenders say, well, you know, this was American foreign policy at, uh, at the time, and that he was simply carrying mm. out what was the uh, deemed law of the land or practice of, of foreign policy at the time. What's your response to that line of defense? Uh, it's, it's been found beyond doubt by minute investigation in Washington that nobody in Congress, which has the power of the purse in these matters and the power to decide, ever knew that the national security advisor of President Nixon, Henry Kissinger, had evolved a plan to murder the head of the general staff in a democratic country, not contiguous to but neighboring the United States, a democracy with which the United States was not at war. No one was ever told of that plan. We know of no authorization for Kissinger to have carried it out. Let alone the bombing of Cambodia. The bombing of Cambodia was likewise concealed from Congress. It's flattering to the American people. They have to be lied to so much, I sometimes think. And within the administration, since you argue for an indictment of the administration in general, which might be fair, it should be said that uh, the secretaries of defense and state, respectively uh, Melvin Laird and William Rogers, were both very much opposed to the invasion of Cambodia uh, as a violation of neutrality and of international law, and also as of a misreading of what the real causes of the war in Vietnam were. The idea that if only we could clean up a sanctuary or two across the border, the rebellion in South Vietnam would dry up, seemed to them a fantasy. Uh, but the, there was a group of later indicted criminals around Mr. Nixon who felt that this was the only way their boss's uh, reputation could be saved. And by taking their side against the secretaries of state and defense, Henry Kissinger tipped the balance. What about the old argument of moral equivalency, that these are just part and parcel of practices of the Cold War and that what the communists were doing was every bit as awful and required a counterbalance? Attacking and killing uh, a democratic conservative constitutional officer in a neighboring democracy with which the U.S. is not at war, and a country, by the way, that can threaten nobody, Chile, um, in collusion with a fascist uh, criminal group, is not anti-communism. It is, in fact, collusion with fascism. But I'd go further and say that I don't greatly care to be lectured on anti-Stalinism by Mao Zedong's best friend, by Leonid Brezhnev's uh, preferred negotiating partner. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the man who told Gerald Ford when he was president that he shouldn't receive Alexander Solzhenitsyn in the Oval Office, which Congress thought he should, because it might offend the communists who were kissing his friends. By the man who is paid by the Stalinists in Beijing to this day to defend the massacre of their own young people in Tiananmen Square. I won't have it from him that he's doing this against communism. It's just another of the constituents of the gigantic lie that constitutes his reputation. He's a thug and yep. a crook and a liar and a pseudo-intellectual and a murderer. Okay, that's all very, of those things are factually very verifiable. Strong. Factually verifiable. He also, that he is an anti-communist is a speculation that he likes to encourage. 